Hi, could you tell me some of the history about Jesse James and how he's associated with uh, Salinas County well, or Arrow Jesse Rock? Jesse James isn't, is, is, I've never found any indication of him really being here. Okay. Uh, uh, James pretty well, um, well, I mean, it's possible he passed through, but he never did anything here. I okay, mean, no robberies or significance. No, no robberies or anything significant. Um, you know, a lot of that that he did was up in North Missouri. There was a little bit of action yeah. down down south uh, towards. Uh, when I was a little kid, I lived 11 miles away from the James family farm, uh, so I was doing yeah. a series on YouTube about Jesse James. Yeah, yeah, but right around here, he never did anything. Uh, we did. Uh, we did have stuff, Bloody Bill Anderson. Oh, okay. He was real active. Right? That was, he was a fan of Bloody Bill Anderson because he rode with him. Yeah, him yeah. and his brother, yeah. Yeah, uh, Anderson was around in the area and did some things. George Todd did. Yeah. And uh, uh, Dick Yeager. Okay. And of course, those guys were, you know, and, and James was with them when they were all bushwhacking. And, yeah. And, when Bernard Lawrence, they were all together. But yeah, it was Bushwhacker yeah, versus the Jayhawkers. Yeah, Todd and uh, Todd and Jaeger and Anderson, we have found stuff about them being around here, but yeah. I never found anything about Jesse. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd never seen anything in stuff I looked up to about him having an association with the Marshall um, town no. or the train there or no. anything like that. Nothing, nothing here. Uh, nothing around this area. We always, uh, always caution people because it's that everybody says, yeah, Jesse James is here, robbed this bank. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, if you're in the north half of the state, Jesse James was everywhere and did everything. If you're in the south half of the state, Bell Starr did everything. Yep. You That's know, and I said, they couldn't be everywhere at once. Everybody's either related or knows somebody that was robbed by him. Every, yes. When I was growing up, I heard all those stories, so that's what I related on my YouTube series. Yeah. I was telling the stories I was told by parents, grandparents, aunts sure. and uncles. And sure. Yeah, sometimes sometimes the truth gets a little, little yeah. askew in those things. I titled mine The True Legend of Jesse James <laughs> because it's a little bit of truth, a little bit of legend, and you kind of oh, mix yeah. them together. And, and, you know, and I, I you know, when I write or talk about history, I... I yeah, I don't. I always talk about the stuff. I say, well, it's an anecdote or it's a tradition, but I don't. There's no documentation. Yeah. To back that up for a fact. It's mm -hmm. uh, so like I had. There's there's one story about a, a, a fight between two commanders uh, one, uh, over during the Indian War. They captured some Indians and. Colonel Cooper wanted to execute all the Indians on the spot. Colonel Dodge said no. Said they uh, negotiated a surrender, if, you know, and we're going to honor that. And they about came to blows over it. And then said one of the stories was that Nathan Boone rode up and intervened and broke it up. And the only problem with that story, it sounds great. The only problem was is is we got hardcore handwritten uh, documents by uh, and General Benjamin Howard that says, I have Boone scouting up uh, against oh. the Indian villages on the Rock River in Illinois. And yeah. I said, well, now, how yeah. could Nathan Boone be over here yeah. breaking up this fight if he is clearly mm -hmm. at this date in Illinois? So, you know, it's just one of those things yeah. that you have to sift through and they had to actually take two uh, guns out of the collection of the Jesse James Museum because they checked the dates of manufacture and he wasn't alive then. He would already die. Oh, sure. So he could not have carried Well, it's those. like that bed over there. For yeah. years, everybody said George Washington slept that bed. Yeah. Really, they did. Yeah. Well, that bed wasn't manufactured until 1833 because yeah. the family that bought it, uh, the man uh, uh, bought it, uh, Edens, married one of the Sappington daughters, and for their honeymoon, they honeymooned in Philadelphia and picked out furniture, and that oh. was one of the pieces that they had. Oh. So they got married in 1833. You know, Washington had been dead 33 yeah. years. Yeah. And I have a, a gun down there in the basement. It's uh, uh, in the old catalog. It's listed that 
that this was Daniel Boone's rifle. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he brought down much game with this gun and da da da. And I looked at it and I said, well, in the first place, it's a musket, not a rifle. In the second place, it's stamped Virginia Manufactory, 1817, which means, and it had been, con it had been converted. So it started out as a flint. It was a military musket. Uh, and then it had been converted to flint. And I said, you know, Daniel Boone died in 1820. You can't tell me that a military musket made in 1817 ever made it to Daniel Boone's hands before yeah. 1820. So it just, you know, and it's obviously what it was. It had been converted from flint to percussion and was yeah. used in the Civil War probably by Virginia militia. Yeah. You know. So, you know, I got all this stuff. I got Jesse James frying pan down there. It's just a <laughs> cast iron frying pan. It doesn't look any different than the cast iron frying pan you can go buy at the kitchen. Do you remember hearing the story, too, about his mom going down to the hardware store and buying guns and selling them to collectors that would come by the house? That oh, was, I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. Well, that's kind of the stuff she did. I mean, it followed with other things she did in life. So it's like I asked a collector friend of mine that was a real expert in collecting, and I'm like, how come you never see Jesse James guns that are going for a high price? He's like, because there's so many of them. There's literally hundreds because his mom would go down to the hardware store, sell yeah. them to the collector, and say, yeah, I've got, I need the money because my, you know, and she'd give him the sob story. They'd give her $100 for a gun. She paid $8 at the hardware store. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. There's this... Yeah, everybody, I've seen Je so many Jesse James pistols. That it it's all about the provenance, and if you can't prove it or got something sure. with him holding the gun or well, something. Well, it's like I've got Geronimo's headdress. Down. Yeah. And, and, it's, and, it, and it's actually old. Mm -hmm. It's actually Apache. Mm -hmm. And it's made with real eagle feathers. And, uh, and I looked at that, and I thought, now how in the heck would Geronimo's headdress end up in Arrow Rock. Uh, and somebody had that left a note that they had actually bought it from Geronimo. Well, I got to looking up, and Geronimo was doing the same thing. Yeah. And when he was uh, in Oklahoma in his latter years to make a living, he would make bows, arrows, headdresses, any number of things, and sell them. And that's how he made money to stay mm -hmm. alive. So there are dozens and they're and technically genuine, yeah, of Geronimo's headdress, but it isn't stuff that he made and personally used. He yeah. made it to sell. To sell, yeah. You know, so you, yeah. you know, you get into mincing the yeah. the fine details of it. Um, you know, and I and it's fine to say, but you know, you have to spell out to people what exactly was going on with this stuff. I think it's okay to say, you know, I think it's fascinating mm -hmm. if you do have a quote Jesse James gun to say this was one that his mother bought mm -hmm. and then sold, it, sold it to somebody saying it was Jesse's gun as a way of her making yeah. a living or yeah. bilking the public or however you want to word it. I that think would, that's a fascinating story. It would have collector's value just for that sake, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. So, you know, and like Geronimo's headdress, I don't really have a reason to put it on display here, but if I did, I'd put that story. Geronimo yeah. was making this stuff mm -hmm. as a way of, of making a living yeah. in his latter years. And, uh, you know, that's the deal. But now, yeah, Jesse, he wasn't, he wasn't around here. I never yeah. found any evidence of him being around here. He robbed that uh, one train down by uh, oh, way south here towards Tipton. Or okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right there on 50. Yeah, right there on old 50. There was a place down there where he did rob the train. Okay. Um, you know, so like I said, he, it's possible he could. That's probably unlikely he didn't at least pass through oh, from time he, to time. Yeah, yeah, he may have passed through, but but he didn't actually pull yeah. any robberies here. And I never saw anybody yeah. that claimed anything for yeah. him. Yeah, there would be news accounts or something like that. Yeah, there. oh yeah, if he had done it, there would have been. Well, he had that family friend that used to write the stories any time, you know, he'd take any kind of robbery or story, you know, John Edward that would take the story and just, you know, blossom yeah. it out and everything. Yeah, yeah everybody wanted to yeah. make something off of it yeah. <laughs> while they could. Yeah. yeah.
My name's Chuck, by the way. Hi, Chuck. Mike. Dickie. Mike. I'm the side administrator here. Oh, okay. That's great. Thank you for sharing. Okay, sure thing. You guys have a good day. Thanks.